Today I have another round of drugstore dupes for high-end makeup to test out. I'll be trying what I believe are dupes of products from brands like NARS, Urban Decay, Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez, and more, so let's just get straight into it. But first, if you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. First, I think I found a dupe for my absolute favorite brow pencil that is on the expensive side. I usually don't mind splurging on it because I love it so much, but it'd be great if I could find something similar a little cheaper. This is the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. It's $24. It has an ultra fine tip that creates very natural, thin hair-like strokes. The formula is waterproof and offers up to 12 hours of wear. It comes in 12 shades. I do prefer the shade six, which is a very cool dark brown. And what I believe to be a drugstore dupe is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer. This is another very, very fine tipped retractable pencil. It's only $8.99. And even this shade, which is dark brunette, looks very, very similar to shade six in the Benefit pencil. This is a waterproof formula as well. There are no hour long claims though. And this is available in 10 shades. So almost the same color range. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Benefit pencil on my left side. What I love about thin tipped pencils like these is that you can get really, really clean definition, but your brows don't end up looking chunky. I feel like when you use like those thicker pencils, the wedge shaped pencils, it's really easy to go overboard, but with this type of tip, it's a little more foolproof in my opinion. And take it from someone who used to have dreadfully thick drawn on brows. <laughs> Never wanna go back to that. So there's the finished brow. I think it looks filled in and defined without looking bulky. So now I'm gonna go in with the L'Oreal pencil on my right side. The texture is also very, very similar. It's not too creamy, but it's just the right amount of soft so you can easily blend the product through the brows. So here's the finished brow look side by side. I think we got almost the exact same results. However, with these dupes, it's really gonna come down to how my brows look at the end of the day. Next, I'm gonna try to dupe the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded Palette. Now this is $44 and this was one of the naked palettes that I don't feel like got a lot of traction. It wasn't super popular. I didn't hear a lot of people talking about it in the long term. But again, it is a neutral palette like most of the naked palettes with a peachy and bronze color story. We have 12 shades here. Now, funny enough, in the last dupe video, it was a Revlon eyeshadow palette that duped the high-end one. And I have another one of those small color stay palettes, but this time in the Maverick version. So this one has 10 shades. It is quite a bite-sized palette, but we have a very similar warm and bronzy color selection. Not so much peachy, but there is sort of like a warm, maybe terracotta peach shade. Now about a month ago on TikTok, I did use these side by side and I thought that the end result looked very, very close. So I'm gonna be recreating that. Starting in the Urban Decay palette, I'm gonna go in to Bribe and that's what I'm just gonna use on the base of my lid. And in the Maverick palette, there is this bone shade. That'll be my base shade on the drugstore side. I will say with these tiny color stay palettes, it can be hard <laughs> to fit your brush in the color. Okay, those are looking pretty dang similar. Back into the Naked palette, I'm going into this camel brown called Boundaries. That'll be my transition shade. And as expected with Urban Decay shadows, these mattes are very pigmented, very easy to blend. And in the Revlon palette, I'll use this warm brown and do the same thing. This one does look slightly darker. So I'm gonna try to go in with a lighter hand. <laughs> I went in so lightly and it's still looking darker on this side. Dare I say these shadows are slightly more pigmented? It's just retaining a lot of the pigment as I blend, which is not a bad thing. I'm just trying to get it to match this side. I'll add a little bit more on the Urban Decay side, but we're as close as we're going to get. On the Urban Decay side, I'm gonna go into the shade called Burn. It's a bronze with like a reddish shimmer to it. And just using my finger, I'll pat that onto the lid. I'm gonna focus it mostly on the outer corner and inner corner so we can kind of do a halo look. And I'll just blend that into the transition shade. There's a very similar bronze here. Again, there is sort of this red shimmer to it. 
if I remember correctly, it applies a little bit more intense. So on this side, this bronze translates more brown with the red shimmer just being very, very subtle. And on the Urban Decay side, that red shimmer sort of takes precedence. So what I'm gonna do to try to even out the tones, there is a rose gold shade in the Revlon palette. And I'm gonna tap that very lightly over the brown to sort of bring out more of those reddish pink vibes. And on the Urban Decay side, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this dark brown to the outer corner and inner corner to deepen that up and match the tone. This is looking so similar. I'm so happy. <laughs> on the Urban Decay side, I'm going into Barely Baked, which is a champagne -y gold. And again, just gonna use my finger and tap that right in the middle of the lid. And that'll create this beautiful halo effect. Love this shade. It reminds me of the classic Urban Decay shade Half Baked, clearly inspired by it, judging by the name. And so in the Maverick palette, we do have a very similar gold. I think it might be a little bit more yellow. Yeah, it is slightly more golden versus this side is really translating as more champagne. I do not think that if you didn't know I used two completely different palettes, you'd be able to tell. But I'm very happy with how this look came out side by side. Now I did apply these over the same eyeshadow primer on both sides, so we'll see how it holds up throughout the day. One type of product that I don't think we hear a lot about when talking about dupes is lashes. So here I have a pair of the Faux Mink Lily Lashes in the style Miami. This is probably the brand's most popular lash style. And I wanted to test them out side by side with my personal favorite Faux Mink Lashes from AOA Studio. This is in the style Terry, and I do do think that they look pretty similar. So let's talk about the Lily Lashes. These go for $28 a pair. They are vegan and they're supposed to be reusable up to 20 times. Now these are very wispy, very fluttery, but like I mentioned, they are faux mink. Now my old favorites, the AOA 3D faux mink lashes, again, faux mink, vegan, cruelty free. These are only $1.55 a pair. Once I discovered these, I pretty much stopped using any other false lash besides my magnetic ones. But on top of the fact that they're so cheap, a part of the proceeds goes towards animal charities. So it's like all around, great price, great cause. So these are handmade and they can be reused. Now I have maybe gotten about five to six uses out of each pair that I open, but I'm not super careful about taking care of my lashes and cleaning off the gunk. So you might be able to stretch it a little bit farther, but the band is a high enough quality and thick enough to really keep its integrity over several uses. So here they are side by side. You can see the similarity in style where it kind of has the alternating long lash and short lash. However, the Lily lashes are a little bit more fluffy than the AOA. And I am gonna be using the same glue on both sides, which is an AOA glue. Again, I think this is like 188. I mean, can you believe this is a $1.55 lash? Like even if it doesn't look as fluffy as the $28 one, it's not bad. I would say this is more natural looking than a lot of other falsies at the drugstore. The only downside is that it's not available in a drugstore. You do have to order them online. So there's the AOA side. Let's put on the Lily Lash. You know, I feel like the bands on these are incredibly similar. I don't think either one is actually thicker than the other. Ooh. <laughs> this one's like, very curled. I'm gonna need to sort of flatten it out. I might need to curl the AOA side. This is intense. Definitely a little bit wispier, I guess you could say, on the Lily Lashes side. Now, typically if I were curling lashes, I would do it before I put them on my eyes so that I don't risk ripping them out, but I'm sort of pushing the curler towards my face so that I don't pull them off of my eye. <laughs> yeah, I do believe the Lily Lashes are a bit longer. So we definitely have more bulk on the Lily Lash side, which I'm not sure if I necessarily like better. I feel like the AOA Lash sort of 
suits my face better or my eye shape better. For sure, more length and curl on the Lily Lash side as well. I wouldn't say one is thicker than the other. I just think that the Lily Lash side might have that appearance because the lashes are a bit more wispy, but I don't think they're worth 18 times more than this side. So while these are not quite the dupes that I thought they would be, I sort of prefer the budget-friendly dupe side better than the high-end side. The next high-end product that I believe I have a drugstore dupe for has been super popular recently. In fact, the whole brand has been hyped up since its launch. This is the Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez Vulnerable Melting Cream Blush. This is $21. It's supposed to give a pretty light coverage, natural looking wash of color. It's a vegan formula available in five shades. And the finish is supposed to dry down to satin. Now, all of this combined with the packaging actually reminded me a lot of the Believe Beauty Color Me Cream Blush. This is $4.50 from Dollar General. This only comes in two shades, but it's a very similar texture. I know that these are not gonna be exact color dupes because I did swatch them side by side when I was buying this at Sephora, but for this one, I'm more so trying to dupe the formula. So let's go in with the Rare Beauty one first. Now, when I saw on my finger in this, the texture is very slick. It's very thin. It just melts right at the touch of your finger and it's not tacky at all. This shade, by the way, is nearly neutral. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pat that on. Now you can see how it just shears out immediately. They call this mistake proof because it's gonna be really hard to over apply this because of how it just blends out and into the skin. Now you can build it up a little bit, which I am gonna do because I believe that this is gonna be a little bit more sheer than the Believe Beauty blush. But oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And it just kind of melds in to the rest of your makeup. Looks so natural, so seamless. I love it, very easy to use. Now this is the first Rare Beauty product that I've actually used. I have been watching all the YouTube videos since they launched the brand and uh, this was the product that I decided I need to try it. <laughs> now on the Believe Beauty side, I'm using the shade Doll Face, which is going to be a bit more cool toned. It's got more of a purpley undertone to it. However, dipping my finger into this, it just feels so similar. It's a very slick texture. There's just no stiffness to it. You know what I mean? Like your finger just glides over, it melts right under the heat of your finger. Now I'm gonna go a little light handed with this because I do know that this is gonna be a bit more pigmented than the Rare Beauty side. However, it's got the same blendability, especially if you do go in pretty light at first, you can get that same very sheer, very natural look. But this one I think will just build up a little bit faster if you do want something a bit heavier, more of a statement. So as you can see side by side, the Rare Beauty side is a little bit more of a warmer shade, but I don't think it looks too crazy. <laughs> now it's hardly been like two minutes and the Rare Beauty side is already completely dried down. They call it a satin finish. It does feel powdery almost. It feels like I put on a powder blush and not a cream blush. It does not have any type of dewy finish, but there is just a very, very slight radiance to it. So if you like the idea of the ease of application that a cream blush can provide and the blendability, but you don't necessarily want the dewy look that a lot of cream blushes leave you with, this would be an awesome option. And same goes for the Believe Beauty side. So this one might take a tiny bit longer to dry down, but we are at the same level of satin. It's not tacky at all. It's completely dried down. And again, we have just a little bit of that natural highlight coming through. So I would say these are so extremely similar in formula and finish, but I do wanna see how they last. And if we end up with one side maybe looking more faded throughout the day, I will keep you updated. Last up, I have a pair of lip dupes, at least I think I do. This is the NARS Oil Infused Lip Tint. It is $26. This contains pomegranate extract, raspberry seed oil, and vitamins A and E. It is supposed to soften the lips with a lot of moisture and give off a sheer wash of color. 
Now, just looking at this at face value, it did remind me a lot of the Maybelline Lifter Gloss. I know everybody has been comparing this to the Fenty Gloss as a dupe, but I've never tried that, so here we are. But this is only $8.99, and just looking at them in the tube, they both have like the same micro shimmer effect that I think they're gonna look pretty similar on the lips. So this one is marketed as a gloss, not an oil, and they feature hyaluronic acid Acid as the main draw. However, it also contains coconut oil. And the official claims are that it smooths and hydrates the lips. Now again, these shades are not going to be exact matches, but since they are very sheer, I don't think we're gonna be able to tell the difference very much wearing them side by side. So let's go ahead and put on the NARS one first. I'm gonna start out with a thinner layer. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> I've really enjoyed wearing lip oils recently. As someone who used to not like lip gloss or anything that wasn't like matte on the lips, this is like a really nice texture to wear throughout the day. And as you can see, compared to my bare lip side, this does add just a little bit of warmth, a little bit of color, and a lot of shine. That micro shimmer doesn't look glittery at all, but when it catches the light, it's just so beautiful. Mm, that feels so good. Okay, so this was in the shade Reef. Now let's move on to the Maybelline gloss. This is in the shade Topaz. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to tell the difference. Hmm, <laughs> interesting. This does feel like a thinner formula, which I kind of prefer. That's funny because as I was putting the NARS one on, it didn't feel thick, but feeling them side by side on my lips, the NARS side does feel just slightly heavier. I kind of prefer how the Maybelline one feels. However, the appearance is like exactly the same. I'm getting the same amount of color payoff. I'm getting the same intensity in shine and the same little glisten from the micro shimmer in both formulas. So I would say look wise, these are dupes. And as far as which formula feel you prefer, I guess it just depends on how sensitive you are to like heavier products. I kind of like the Maybelline side a little better, but we'll see if one side or the other maybe like stays feeling hydrated longer. Okay, now that I have both of these sides done, we've got the high-end side and the drugstore dupe side. I think that it's looking like one cohesive look, but I'm going to wear the makeup throughout the day and then come back and update you on how the products performed against one another. I'll see you in a second. Okay, it's been six hours since I've put this makeup on. Let me zoom you in so you can see the high-end products and the drugstore dupes up close side by side. Checking in on the brows first. So we have Benefit on this side and L'Oreal here. And I think that both sides look just as good as when I first applied. There's no fading at all, still very defined. There's no smudging or smearing. What I typically look for when I'm gauging how well a brow product lasts on me is the inner portion of my brow where I sort of have the color blended out a little bit more sheer than the rest. That's usually where I experience the first signs of fading or breakdown, especially because it's right in the crosshairs of my T-zone, which is oily, but both sides are still very defined and evenly blended without any breakdown of the brow product in that area. So I think it's safe to say we found a dupe. Moving on to the eyeshadow, there is no creasing at all on either side, both going very, very strong in terms of pigmentation still. And it's so funny because throughout the day, I sort of forgot which side was Urban Decay and which side was Revlon. So I think just by that alone, I can say that at least the shades that I used for this look are dupes. Even though I did a little bit of shade layering to get them to match, you can still get the same look from the cheaper alternative. Okay, these lashes. Now, I did actually end up trimming the Lily lashes just a bit lengthwise so that it sort of matched the AOA side better, but even still, I don't think that these are exactly dupes, but I think that the $1.55 lashes are what I consider the better option. I think that they still look very fluttery and dramatic. They don't have that plasticky or waxy look that a lot of false lashes have. And I mean, you just cannot beat the price. I feel like the bands are very similar in strength and width. So I, I'm not gonna say that these will last as long as these because I haven't tried. I don't feel like I would try to wear these up to 20 times anyway. 
So these are not dupes, but I like the affordable option better. Now for the blushes. I'm shocked because we have the same amount of sheer color that we did at the beginning of the day. Like the fact that I blended these out to be sort of stained and not opaque at all, and they didn't get any more faded at all. No patchiness, no breakdown. As mentioned, they're not exact shade dupes, although these don't look all that different side by side. Like, let's get real. So similar, but different. Not perfect dupes, but very close. And finally, the lips. So I did have to apply both lip products again after lunch because as they are glossy slash oily, they are not transfer proof or smudge proof. But after reapplying, it's been a few hours now and they both have sort of dried down. Like there's not as much of a wet, shiny look, but my lips equally feel moisturized on both sides. I would say that on the NARS side, it might feel a little bit tacky and it doesn't feel that way on the Maybelline side at this point in the day. Both products left behind a noticeable shimmer even at this point in the day. That's sort of what's left giving my lips a little bit of a glistening effect. Color dupes, yes. Formula dupes, uh, not really, but you do get a little bit of the same benefits in that they are both comfortable, hydrating, and smoothing on the lips. I'm super curious to hear your thoughts on these drugstore dupes. Were there any affordable products that you think did better than the high-end ones? Let me know in the comments below. Today's shout out goes to Ilana. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad. And join me over in this video next where I try two automatic hair curlers. One went viral on TikTok, the other's $100 cheaper. I guess you could kind of say it's a dupe. I'll see you over there. Bye.